Hello everyone. My name is Dai Chi, and I will give you the lecture, regarding the radiation or remediation activities. So, let's start today's lecture. Today's theme is, units representing the exposure dose, see that. Are you ready? Hello, Hickory, shopping? What are you looking for? Hello, Mr. Daichi. I am going to buy banana, but I am now debating, which one is good. Every banana looks quite similar and I can't decide one to buy. Yes, I know how you feel it. It is difficult to choose one among things which look similar. By the way, something similar reminds me of the units, sievert, which represent the impact caused by radiation, and there are different kinds of sievert. Today let me talk about it, if you have time. Okay, that's a good idea. If you don't mind, let's change the place and I would like to listen to your lecture. So, do you remember, that I gave the following explanation earlier, regarding the unit, sievert. Finally, let me talk about the exposure dose. This is the extent of actual impact caused by the exposure to radiation. For example, the extent of impact to whole body is called the effective dose, and unit is described as sievert. This unit derives from Swedish physicist, Rolf Maximilian Sievert. If the exposure dose gets too high, of course it causes negative effect on human health. Moreover, to represent the amount of exposure dose, there are a lot of indices. For example, effective dose, committed effective dose, equivalent dose, ambient dose equivalent, personal dose equivalent, and so on. These indices, however, have the same unit, sievert. So, let's choose the correct indices, according to the context which we would like to use. Yes, I remember that. I learned that the unit, sievert, has different kinds of meanings. Wow, you remember the lecture. Very good. Okay, so let me begin with the effective dose and the equivalent dose. First of all, as I explained earlier, the effective dose is the extent of the impact on whole body, caused by the exposure to radiation. The effective dose is calculated by multiplying the extent of impact on each organ, by the tissue weighting factor, which represents the sensitivity to the radiation. And the extent of impact on each organ, is called the equivalent dose. I see. The impact on whole body is considered, by summing up the impact on each organ. Correct. And the tissue weighting factors are presented in this table. For example, as you can see, bone marrow, colon, lung and stomach are sensitive to radiation, compared with bone surface, brain, and skin. Okay, the extent of impact depends on the types of organs. By the way, the equivalent dose is calculated by multiplying the absorbed dose, by the radiation weighting factor, which is determined specifically to the types of radiation. The larger this radiation weighting factor is, the larger the impact on human body will be, as well. And these are examples of radiation weighting factor. For example, alpha ray causes impact on human body, 20 times as much as gamma ray, x-ray, and beta ray. I see. The extent of impact on human body is totally different between the types of radiation. That's right. The equivalent dose and the effective dose, are the extent to manage the impact on human body. And these are called protection quantity. It is, however, difficult to monitor these protection quantity, because they are calculated, based on the actual exposed dose to each organ. Therefore, the ambient dose equivalent, or the personal dose equivalent, has become necessary. These are the measurable quantities, to estimate the protection quantity, and these are called, the operational quantity. Specifically, the example of monitoring ambient dose equivalent, is the air dose rate monitored by survey meter. 
In addition, the example of monitoring personal dose equivalent is, the personal exposed dose monitored by personal dosimeter. Moreover, importantly, the ambient dose equivalent and personal dose equivalent, are always larger than the effective dose, in order to evaluate conservatively, in other words, to stand on the safer side. I see. It is difficult to measure directly the equivalent dose or effective dose, so by using the survey meter or personal dosimeter, the operational quantity are measured conservatively, from the safer point of view. So, let me wrap up my lecture by providing you the key points. There are a lot of units representing the exposure dose, and they can be roughly divided into two categories. One is the protection quantity, which is used to manage the impact on human health, caused by radiation. The other one is, the operational quantity, which is monitored to estimate the protection quantity. Of these units, the effective dose is a representative protection quantity. It is calculated by multiplying equivalent dose, by the tissue weighting factor, followed by summing up each impact. The equivalent dose is the impact on each organ, estimated by the types of radiation. And tissue weighting factor is the index, which represents the sensitivity of each organ. And the ambient dose equivalent and the personal dose equivalent are actually measured, in order to estimate the protection quantity. These values are always larger than the effective dose, in order to stand on the safer side. By the way, I didn't cover the committed effective dose in this lecture. So, that will be explained, taking another opportunity. Okay, today's lecture is now dismissed. See you next time. In this channel, the useful information, regarding the radiation and remediation, will be provided to you. If you like it, please subscribe to this channel, and do not forget to click the like button.